Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to live story time. My name is Miss Mary, and I am here to share more stories with you today. Um, thank you for tuning in. As always, I am just going to wait a little bit um, before getting started. And this week, I am reading stories about determination and self-confidence. And I decided on this theme because of the Olympics. And even though none of the none of the books that I'm reading are about athletes, um, I thought the the message of determination and self confidence um, is very Olympic themed when you think about it. Um, these athletes are so incredible, and they do such amazing, um, at times dangerous things and um, the the level of determination that they have um, when they're training and when they're competing um, and the sportsmanship they have it's so beautiful to watch so um, I thought that would be a great theme for today so um, as always if you are here please say hello in the comments and I will be sure to give you a shout out a couple of reminders about shout outs as always um, there is a bit of a lag with me, you writing a comment and me seeing it. So if I don't answer you right away or say hello right away, I'm not ignoring you. Um, I just haven't seen your comment yet. So as soon as I do, I will be sure to give you a shout out. And also, um, if I am in the middle of a story, I just wait until the end of the story to say hello because I don't want to interrupt the flow. So we have some people tuning in. I am excited to see that. So um, let's get started, all right? This book is called Tallulah Plays the Tuba by Tiffany Stone. I played the clarinet, if anybody was curious. <laughs> um, all throughout, like I started in fifth grade and I played all throughout high school. I did not play the tuba, but I'm impressed by it because it's so big. So here we go. Here's our first story about determination. Here we go. Tallulah wants to play the tuba more than anything. Mm pa. That's what she thinks it sounds like. So she joins the school band. Although she is the youngest, Tallulah can already read music. Plus, she has very powerful lungs. You see all the candles she's blowing out? And strong muscles. But Tallulah is tiny and the tuba is not. It's true, the tuba is huge. It's like one of the biggest instruments. Mr. Greenwood, the band leader, says, I'm sorry, Tallulah, but you are just too tiny to play the tuba. Tallulah stands on her chair. Now I'm not, she says. Well, that's true, Tallulah agrees, Mr. Greenwood, but I think it would be safer to sit down and try the piccolo instead. Piccolo is very similar to a flute, if you've ever um, seen a flute, but much smaller and higher pitch. See the inner band? <laughs> Come, all comes back to you. Tallulah sits down and tries the piccolo, but it does not go oom pa. The sound is much too small. She has her heart set on that tuba. At supper, Tallulah eats an extra serving of everything to help her grow. And afterwards, at the park, she hangs from the monkey bars for an extra long time. First by her arms, then by her legs. It doesn't help. Tallulah doesn't get any taller. All she gets are blisters and a stomach ache. Poor Tallulah. She's trying. At home, Tallulah's mom says, just wait, Tallulah, you'll grow. But Tallulah can't wait. 
Oompa fills her head. She buzzes her lips just like she's playing. Right? And she presses pretend keys in the air. She knows all the notes. Every time she has band practice, Tallulah tries to convince Mr. Greenwood that she is not too tiny. She stacks up all the music books and climbs on top. That's very inventive, Tallulah, says Mr. Greenwood, but um, we need those. She uses a stepladder from the library <laughs> and a pair of stilts from the gym. Tallulah tries everything she can think of. She even gets her friends to form a pyramid with her on top. She can finally reach the mouthpiece, but now there's nobody left in the band. Hmm, that's not good either. Tallulah says, Mr. Greenwood, I'm sorry, but the tuba is just too big for you. I know, says Tallulah. She feels tears sneak into her eyes. The tuba is too big for her, and there's nothing she can do about it. Unless... Tallulah has an idea. The next time she has band practice, Tallulah gets there early and goes to work. Before Mr. Greenwood arrives, Tallulah talks to the rest of the band. Grab your music stands and instruments and follow me. Mm -pa. When Mr. Greenwood walks in, the band room is empty. Outside, the air is filled with music from flutes, clarinets, and saxophones, trumpets, and trombones, and a tuba. Tallulah? asks Mr. Greenwood. The music stops and the other musicians step aside. I wasn't too tiny, said Tallulah. The tuba was too big. But I fixed that. Mr. Greenwood smiles. Then he lifts up his baton. Okay, everyone, are you ready to play? The whole band shouts, yes. But the biggest yes comes from the very back from the tiniest musician of all. Oompa! So Tallulah figured out how to play that tuba. I just love that determination. She wasn't taking no for an answer. Um, and the, t the, you know, the tuba is a huge instrument, but someone's got to play it, right? And why couldn't it be Tallulah? Okay, I have a comment from, um, I'm praying I pronounce this correctly, from Nibidita. And it says, hi, Miss Mary, my five-year-old daughter, Orja, is online today. Please say hello to her. Orja, I hope I am pronouncing your name correctly. Please say in the comments if I haven't, um, but it looks like Orja. And I wanted to say hello to you. Thank you for tuning in to Storytime. Um... I hope you enjoy the stories today. Okay. Um, and as always, if you are tuning in, please say hello in the comments so I can give you a shout out too. Okay. This next story is called Sofia Valdez, Future Prez by Andrea Beatty. Okay. So this little girl, Sofia, wants to be president. Let's see what it's about. Sophia was a baby who got things done, helping her family before she even turned one. She and Abuelo went out every week to help elderly friends around Blue River Creek who couldn't get out and about on their own and with no place to gather were stuck home alone. That's so nice of them to do that. 
raking the leaves, taking pets for a walk, or just dropping by for a treat and a talk. Sophia Valdez did as much as she could for her family and friends and her whole neighborhood. A dreamer, a doer, a real life go-getter. But mo uh, most people like good, but Sophia liked better. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Each morning, Abuelo walked Sophie to class. They walked home again along Blue River Pass. Making plans, munching cookies, abuelo and girl, except for that Tuesday when Pup saw the squirrel. With a howl, Pup took off, racing all through the town, over, under, beneath, and around. Sophia scrambled to try to keep up with the hollering man and the bellowing Pup. The squirrel ran to the top of a hill made of leftover junk for the local landfill. They reached the tip top of that mountain of trash, which jiggled and broke with an ear splitting crash. Down they all tumbled and hit with a thud on a moldy old pumpkin surrounded by mud. Ugh. Ouch! cried Abuelo. He struggled to stand. A dangerous mess, he said, grasping her hand. The next day, Sophia walked to school solo, but it wasn't the same without her abuelo. This is not right, declared young Sophia, who glared at Mount Trashmore and got an idea. The very next morning at half past dawn, she planted a sign at the front of the lawn. She stood back and smiled, and Pup gave a bark. Get rid of Mount Trashmore. Let's build a new park. What a great idea, Sophia. Each of her neighbors had something to say about benches and fountains and places to play, meeting spots, gardens, a basket for bees, a rubber duck pond, and a kiosk for cheese. Okay. She drew every thought on her map of the park, which was perfectly perfect by a quarter till dark. She drifted to sleep in her soft, cozy bed. Then, bam, she woke up with a thought smacked in her head. She, her heart skipped a beat as she realized each one of her neighbors had said, let me know when it's done. They all thought Sophia could build it alone. But how could one girl do so much on her own? The weight of that thought made her tender heart ache as the night thunder growled and she lay wide awake. Then dawn brought a storm and the gloomy sky wept and the heart sick Sophia finally slept. That is a lot for one little girl to handle. I don't know. Abuelo baked cookies when Sophie got up. He gave her a bag full and sneaked one to pup. He blinked back a tear as he hugged his Sophia. For courage, he whispered, te amo, mi vida. Sophia's knees wobbled. She felt weak inside. She looked at his ankle and quite nearly cried. Though she didn't feel brave or courageous at all, Sophia Valdez went to face City Hall. Okay, we have the library, and here's City Hall. That's... Big scary building for a little girl, right? The mayor's office sent her to room 401, the Blue River Creek Department of Fun, which sent her downstairs to room 302, the office of duck ponds and cool things to do, to the office of monkeys, the department of cheese, the division of fountains and meetings and bees, then down to the basement so musty and cramped, where all the town's papers were sorted and stamped. And that's where the clerk said what no one else did. You can't build a new park. You're only a kid. The words smacked Sophia deep down in her heart. Her plan was kiboshed right before it could start. I think, said Sophia, I think that law's wrong. But her second grade voice didn't sound very strong. The clerk said, clearly, it cannot be done. Do you have any questions? 
Sophia said, one, if you were me and if I was you and he was your grandpa, what would you do? I, w well, said the clerk. Then she said nothing at all. She thought and she thought. Then she sent out a call to every employee throughout City Hall. The entire government of Blue River Creek crammed into the office to hear Sophie speak, but her words jumbled up and her cheeks turned bright red as a dozen emotions rushed into her head. Her heart beat so loudly she thought it would crack. The crowd leaned in closer. Sophia leaned back. Then her arms brushed the edge of the old cookie sack. And that was the moment when Sophia first knew being brave means doing the thing you must do. Though your heart cracks with fear, though you're just in grade two. She took a deep breath, looked the mayor in the eye, and though her knees wobbled, she held her head high. Sophia started talking, she spelled out her plan, and why it all mattered and how it began. And once she got rolling, she had lots to say about meeting spots, monkeys, and places to play, and other ideas for things they could do to help the town other elders and other folks too. She had thoughts on the library, thoughts on the zoo, and perhaps a way to combine the two. And, all right, said the mayor, go start a petition. If the town wants a new park, we'll form a commission. And so young Sophia got right to work with some help from her family and pup and the clerk. The others joined in, not all, but a few, like Miss Lila Greer and the kids in grade two. But they all have signs hanging, you know, holding signs to get their park. There were hearings and surveys and taxes to figure, then bulldozers, cranes, and a blue di bigger digger. They all built that park. That's how it got done. With the hard work of, by, and for everyone. But it began with the dream of a person, just one, who laced up her shoes and then led the way to help Blue River Creek get a new place to play. Now, every evening till long after dark, the town comes together at Citizens Park. They all hold this truth to be self-evident, that Sophia Valdez could grow up to be president. Until then, Sophia, that real-life go-getter, helps Blue River Creek get better and better. And that is... The story of Sophia Valdez, future prez. Again, another wonderful story of determination and not giving up and um, fighting for what you want. You know, she wanted that, that yucky landfill to turn into a park. And she knew she couldn't do it on her own, that's for sure. Um, but she inspired other people to want that park too and they signed the petition, the work got done, and then they had a new place for the community to play and to learn and to have fun. So what a great story of how one little girl's idea started something pretty special. Okay. This next story is um, short and sweet and um, kind of like a, an encouraging story, so I hope you enjoy When You Need Wings by Lita Judge. One day when you feel like no one is listening, And everyone is loud, and you are afraid, and you wish you could just disappear. Shut your eyes and listen. Do you hear it? That isn't your heart. 
That is the sound of your very own wings beating within. They can't be seen by others, but you can hear them and feel them. And use them to fly far away if you need to today. To find treasures. that live inside your mind. To laugh and dance and find brave-hearted friends to go a little wild and even to roar. So, listen closely. Do you hear it? That is the sound of your wings. Giving you strength Why? That is the story of when you need wings. Again, that one was a very short one. Okay. Um, my last story of the day is the first one that I actually picked up this week. I tend to do that. I read the um, one that inspires the whole theme. Um, I tend to read that one last. Um, this one I, I found first and I read it. And I really loved it. And then I said, this is a great theme. Determination and self-confidence. And um, this is definitely a book about determination. So let's enjoy Bella's recipe for, and disaster is crossed out, success by Anna Sequeira. And this book has some, um, some Spanish words sprinkled throughout it. I um, practiced, but Mary is not perfect, so I hope I pronounce everything correctly. If I don't, it was an accident. Um, I am still learning. So here we go. I'm helping Abuela in the kitchen when I can play the piano with my eyes closed, me hermano brags. So what, mi hermana says, I can do 14 cartwheels in a row. Abuela says, oh, stop. We're all good at different things. We are? But what am I good at? Maybe I can be a fabulosa gymnast like my sister, but my somersaults are like Rafa's rolling downhill. Nope. Not fabulosa. Or maybe a great piano player like my brother. But my hands are as heavy as elephant's feet. And my music is not popular with my audience. Nope. Not great at all. I know. I can be a baker like Abuela. I beat and blend and mix and stir and the cookie dough is delit, Ugh, yucky, salty. I think she may have put salt instead of sugar. It's a mistake we make when we're learning, right? I just discovered something terrible. I'm not good at anything. I quit. I cover my face so nobody sees my wet eyes. But Abuela sees everything. Abuela, I say, can you teach me how to make polverones with dolce de leche? We beat, we blend, we bake, but then I shout, 
Oh no, it's as hard as a rock. Abuela says, sometimes that happens, Bella. But we can always try again. Try again? I bet my sister doesn't need to. Then, crash. No biggie, me hermana says. Everyone makes mistakes sometimes. Right? Not my brother. He knows what he's doing. Then, plonk. Oops, said me hermano. No hay problema. I just need more practice. No problem. He just needs more practice. I can't believe it. Even mi hermano makes mistakes. Even her brother makes mistakes. Hmm. Maybe I can try again, too. I measure. I knead. I roll. But my dough crumbles like sand. Oops. I forgot the egg. No problem. Let's start over. I add sugar, margarina, y vainilla. Then egg and flour. Muy bien. Time to finish the filling. Always fun to taste it along the way, right? Stir, stir, stir without stopping. Hmm. I add more sugar and, oh no. My dolce de leche looks like cocodrilo skin. Crocodile skin, that's not good. Then I smell the cookies. Yummy, deliciosos. My belly roars and I decide to try one more time. I'm extra careful this time. I never stop stirring. Wow, my dolce de leche is as smooth as a salamander. And ta-da. My poverones are delicious. Finally, I am good at baking and the master of practicing. No worries. Sometimes that happens. We can always try again. Okay, so Bella, Bella's recipe for success was trying and trying and trying again and again until she got it right. And she was so lucky to have her very patient, caring abuela helping her. Um, baking is hard. Baking is hard to get right. And um, Miss Mary, I, I actually love to bake. Um, I bake for my coworkers, I bake for my friends, I bake for my family. Um, and there are some recipes that I've made hundreds of times, it seems. And yet, sometimes something just doesn't happen right. And the cookies don't come out right, or the dessert doesn't come out right, or it doesn't look like the picture. Um, and it could be something that I've made a bunch of times before. But you never know. Sometimes things just happen, and you try again. So I loved Bella's determination with her baking. I think, um, you know, that's really special. We have another comment from Nibidita. Uh, Orja says, bye, Miss Mary. Thank you for reading these stories to us. You're so welcome. Thank you for tuning in. I hope to see you next week at next Wednesday's story time. Um, and that is going to be um, the little um, end for today is just a reminder um, to be determined with whatever you do, whatever you, hobbies you may have, um, things you're that you're practicing, keep being determined and keep trying and keep focusing. And um, it's okay to mess up and it's okay to fall if, you know, you know you're doing something where you fall or um, it's okay to make mistakes. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. And I think another very important lesson from this year's Olympics is that one that Simone Biles taught us, the wonderful, wonderful gymnast. Um, she is so incredible and so strong. And she knew that something wasn't right 
and she didn't feel safe to compete because she does very, very hard, dangerous moves and she didn't feel right about it. Something was off and she said, I'm not going to compete when I feel this way because I don't want to hurt myself. And that's important to be determined and to be strong, but to also know when it's okay to stop and take a break. Very important. And what a comeback she had when she ended up on that balance beam final and got the bronze medal. So a really important lesson that determination and strength is so important, but it's also important to know when you need a break, right? So thank you to Simone for teaching us that and reminding us of that. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in this week. I hope you all enjoyed the stories, and I will see you next week for more stories at Storytime. Bye, everyone.